Hi everyone and thank you so much for joining me on this easy abdominals rider pilates session. If you're new to rider pilates or if you just need a quiet session this is going to be the perfect one for you. We'll still be covering lots of exercises that will help you develop that nice strong connection between your upper body and your contact and your lower body and your seat. So I'd like you to start, if you can sit cross-legged great, if you can't frog's legs on a cushion or a block is absolutely fine, whatever's comfortable for you. I'd like you to make sure your head is lightly floating on top of an elastic spine and your equal weight through your seat bones. And I'd like you to pop your arms across your chest and turn your shoulders from side to side. As you turn, seat bone pressure is staying equal and your shoulders are staying level. We just want to make sure that everything is moving but in a very balanced, symmetric fashion before we actually start working those tummy muscles. Okay, then I'd like you to bring your arms up above your head, reach up with one side so you lengthen down through the other and then reach up and again lengthen, try to take in a little breath in at the top, that'll help you because you expand your rib cage as you take a breath in, get an increased stretch down that side, one more each way, this is a really good way of making sure you're not carrying any tension through your body as you go into the exercise. So we're going to start on your back with the abdo prep exercise, so nice and simple. I'd like you to have your feet and knees approximately hip width apart, but wherever feels comfortable. Find a comfortable neutral position for your low back and pelvis, so you don't have to be flattened, you don't have to be arched, just neutral and comfortable. Think about those imaginary ropes or springs connecting your ribs to your pelvis watching you don't arch your ribs upwards and think about your pelvic floor so remembering to take it from floor zero up onto floor three float your fingers reach for your toes and then lift your head so that you look between your legs take everything back down together so check rib position pelvis position and pelvic floor then float reach and look between your legs Take everything back down together. So try to keep your pelvic floor onto floor three throughout. And it may well be that you need to re-lift before you do each repetition, that's absolutely fine. If you can keep it going for several repetitions, even better. But whatever you do, try to make sure that you are still breathing throughout. Okay, we're going to move on to doing your oblique prep exercise now. So if you pop your right hand at the top of your neck or the base of your head, Otherwise, it's the same starting position, so think ribs, pelvis position and pelvic floor. Float your left fingers, reach for your left toes and bring your right shoulder towards your left knee. Take everything back down together. So float, reach, turn and everything back down together. Keep those movements slow and steady, watching that you're not arching and dipping down through your low back. If you find that you're pulling with your hand, and pop your fingers around your ear. We'll do one more this way. And then we're going to swap. So you've got your left hand at the top of your neck or the base of your head, right hand on the floor beside you. Float, reach, and into that turn. Left shoulder to right knee, and everything back down together. Float, reach, turn, and everything down together. And again, if you find that you're pulling, put your fingers around your ear, and then possibly pull because that would be really quite uncomfortable. Again just watch that you're not sinking down through your back. Let's just do one more this way. Fabulous job. Okay we're going to move on to doing your hundreds. We'll keep your feet on the floor. Same start up but it's even more important now. Ribs towards your pelvis so this bit of you staying nice and still. Pelvic floor onto floor three and then you're going to pat little imaginary puddles of water by your sides, always moving from your shoulders, so we don't want wrists, we don't want fingers, it's all from your shoulders. So if you are new to Pilates, there are a lot of water analogies, but actually it's quite helpful because I think the water helps you to think of flowing, and that's definitely something with riding, you do want to have that feeling that you're flowing through your movement, so it can be useful. And with this exercise I like it because it encourages you to lightly pat the floor, not smack the floor so it can be quite useful so check in with your rib position 
check in with your pelvic floor, make sure for those last ones that you are really using your shoulders. Okay, then rest your arms down and I suggest that you have them onto your headlights. I'm just going to give you a little bit of feedback about what's going on. We're going to move on to your scissors exercise. So before you start, ribs to pelvis, that's going to help anchor you through here and not allow this to happen. Pelvic floor onto floor three, bring one leg up to your tabletop position and bring it back down. And bring the other leg up to the tabletop position and back down. Again, if you are new to Pilates, we call this tabletop because if your leg is flat, so your hip are near at 90 degrees, you're kind of making a table shape. This is also a really good hip exercise, but in order to keep your ribs down towards your pelvis and avoid this happening as you lower through your leg, you're also really working your tummy muscles. So it's a great exercise for combining the tummy muscles with the hip control element as well. So it's a really nice exercise to do. But do watch that you're moving from your hips and not just bending your knees as you go. You do really want to get that 90 degree position at hips and knees. That's really key for getting the hip and tummy control element. Okay, we're going to move on to doing an exercise called the single leg stretch. Same starting position. You're going to slide one leg straight, back up again and slide the other leg straight and back up again. So you're alternating with your legs. And again, that rib position is important because as your leg goes straight, you want to avoid this happening. If you've ever seen anyone doing sitting trot with their head wobbling around, part of that is to do with the neck, but part of it is because they lack strength through here and this is what's happening through their body. And so the head is going in the same way. Let's add in the arms. Now the arm part of this exercise, you're going to do a circle and you're going to combine that circle with the leg movement. So you're going to do a half circle out as you straighten the leg and a half circle in as you bring the leg back. Same with the other leg, half circle out, half circle in. Now that we've added in your arms, that rib position is even more important because as your arms are going further away from you, the temptation for your ribs to creep upwards is even greater. So it's really key that you're thinking, keep those ribs towards your pelvis, that you use those tummy muscles to help keep you nice and secure and connected. Your tummy muscles, they're contributing to the stability through your low back and pelvis. They are really key in connecting upper body in contact, lower body in seat. We'll do one more with each leg. Lovely. Okay, bring your arms back down and we're going to go onto your hands and knees. And I'd like you to have your hands so they're just in front of your shoulders and ideally your toes tucked underneath your feet. If your toes don't like this position, roll up a thick towel and rest your feet on the towel here and you'll still be able to do a slightly modified version of this exercise. Pelvic floor onto floor three before you start. Then you're going to lift your knees just off the floor and slowly back down. Now you will see my knees are coming about an inch, maybe an inch and a half and no more. We're not trying to go up here. It's just a small little lift and your tummy muscles have to work suitably hard to try and hold you there. If you can do your pelvic floor at the same time, that would be amazing. And don't forget to breathe. It's no good working your abdominal muscles if you have to hold your breath to do so. You always want to be making sure that you can keep your breathing happening nice and regularly, no matter what else you're doing. Let's do one more of these. And then I'd like you to flatten your feet if they were up. Take your bottom backwards so that your bottom is resting on your heels if you can get there. If you can't, just hover wherever feels comfortable. And then allow your head to sink so that you can take a couple of nice deep breaths. Then bring your hands back towards your knees and we're going to come back into sitting and we are going to finish there. That's quite enough if you are new to this or you just wanted a quiet session just to keep things ticking along. You don't always need to spend half an hour, 40 minutes, sometimes just five, 10 minutes is enough. 
So I hope you found that enjoyable, hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. You should be able to do that at the bottom of this video in just a second. Um, and I hope whatever you are doing, you're having a wonderful time with your horses and ponies at the moment.